What's going on everybody? So the top five wide receiver player ratings in Madden NFL 17 has now been released. I, I, I let, let me just go through it real quick because I'm, I'm gonna just um I'm just gonna say that I don't really like the way that it, it has been released. Antonio Brown, I can't disagree with that. The guy was a consistent wide receiver, probably the best. Um I, I forgot how many receptions he had, but he was unbelievable. Um even when um you know uh, Ben Roethlisberger got hurt and uh you know other quarterbacks were throwing the ball, he was still consistent. He made some big drops in some games but this guy by far uh was probably the best wide receiver all the all, you know all around i agree with that steve like i said again i have no hate for antonio brown based on what i saw i watched him play the man was unbelievable let's go to number two julio jones julio jones coming back after an injury prone season last year was listen if you play fantasy football and you played for money you would know that julio jones helped you get that money so I, I don't really i understand it's kind of tough bro i don't really know if i would have him but i guess you gotta have him below him you know what i'm saying i, I don't really know bro it, it, you know julio jones was so impactful last you know last year i don't really it's like it, it's crazy but I, I understand again i understand what's going on here um atlanta falcon fans might be a little bit upset but antonio brown was the goat pretty much the dude was unstoppable so when you talk about impact for the team julio jones was you know Roddy White was really like, you know, I, I guess, I don't know what he was doing. He was just like an old man just running around. He wasn't really um, a consistent factor with the team's offense last year. So I would have, Julio Jones could easily have been a 97, 98, in my opinion. Now, you guys could go ahead and say whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm going based on what I saw and how I lost to people in fantasy football at the same time. And I wanted to shoot myself. So his impact was wild. Same thing, Antonio Brown again. I'm not knocking Antonio Brown for being number one, but I'm saying easily, I wouldn't have been surprised if Julio Jones was higher. Obviously, we know that Calvin Johnson Jr. retired, but he didn't have uh, that that good of a season anyway, so I'm not even going that far. I'm just saying that Julio Jones could have easily been a 97, 98, in my opinion. Not taking anything away from Antonio Brown, okay? Julio Jones is a bigger guy, which means a lot more in the NFL, but I'm not taking anything away from Antonio Brown. As far as consistency, that mother effort was crazy last year. Let's just be honest about it. It's just that Julio Jones, in my opinion, was more impactful. Julio Jones was just as impactful, in my opinion, to the Falcons, at, you know, the same way Antonio Brown was to the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's why I don't, I can't really say that it's not fair. It, it, it could, stat wise, look, stat wise, it makes sense because Antonio Brown had to probably be the number one wide receiver. He had to be, you know, the dude was, he, he was wild. He was wild. But Julio Jones, I think he deserves a little bit more credit. That's my that's my opinion. Let's get it. Okay, AJ Green, another consistent wide receiver. Um, every year they they alter his speed. He's always pretty slow, but the dude the dude has some wheels on on him. I think you know I, I don't know, but um you know the jump I would probably just gave him an overall 99 overall jump. The dude was just doing whatever he wanted when it was jump balls last year. We all know the Red Rocket was throwing the ball sometimes nowhere near him, and he was still going up and getting it. Um, I would have gave him a little bit more speed, but. They've always been playing around with AJ Green speed, so that's not nothing unusual. No argument for me there. He has been one of the most consistent wide receivers in the NFL. I can't argue that. O OBJ. Now this is crazy to me. After a year of Madden 16, where the game was all bro, the whole game was destroyed because of this man's catch on that bum ass corner, uh, Brandon Carr. How the hell is he at number four? I I, I don't understand. I, I don't understand this. I I really don't. See, this, this, when I looked at it, I was like, all right, you know, this, this is just, this doesn't make any sense to me. When you talk about a guy that scares defenses, and I'm not, you know, Randy Moss was the only other receiver that I would ever say that about, and Randy Moss, to me, is the most, um, he was the most feared speed wide receiver ever in the history of the NFL, and I loved watching him play because, let's just be honest about it, that man would just run past anybody and prevent D and do whatever. But OBJ is very, very, very impactful for the Giants. And you're talking about a wide receiver that played without Victor Cruz last year and had other guys that would chip in, but they weren't consistent, which is why the Giants didn't win as much as they were supposed to. But when you look at OBJ's stats and what he offered to the team, I don't understand how this man is number four. And I was pissed about what he did to Madden 16. Because let's be honest, it was his catch that ruined the game. I like it. His catch created aggressive catching. Let's just be honest about that. This man's athleticism and what he did to Brandon Carr is what ruined Madden 16. I am disgusted that this man is number four. And I'm not, I'm not even a New York Giants fan. 
I am disgusted that he's number four. Because when you look at the other guys above him, listen, I'm not going to sit here and argue about it. I, I've seen this man do some wild things, bro. Wild things. And again, I'm not a New York Giants fan. And I also really wanted, I, I was just so pissed about his catch ruin, ruining Madden 16 for me. But let's just be honest. This man has a very, very bright future in the NFL. And there's going to be a lot of haters like, yeah, bro, you're just a dick rider, all that kind of stuff. Those guys right there, we're just going to go ahead and ignore them. Because if you can try to say that OBJ is not worth a higher ranking, then something's wrong with you or you don't watch football, in my opinion. DeAndre Hopkins, this guy, bro, when you look at the Texans team, even though they got manhandled and destroyed in the playoffs, bro, it was it was so wild that they put J.J. Watt out there to try to run a freaking fullback dive or QB sneak out of Wildcat. I don't know what he was doing. This man, how was he not a 99 spec catch? Why would they give him a 98? Did, did anybody see his catches that he made last year? Why is every, I don't understand. It's so simple to give them the one, you know, the one more point. And he's a little, I think he's a little bit faster than the 92 sp speed as well. His route, you know what I'm saying, at 95, I think it should have been, uh, you know, higher than that also. You know, his catching, the man rarely, rarely drops the ball. Look, I don't know, but I'm going to tell you this much. I'm pretty much disgusted with a lot of the stuff that's looking, that, that's happening on this list. I don't know how you guys feel, but I think OBJ should have been higher. I think Julio Jones possibly could have had a higher overall rating. And De DeAndre Hopkins, bro, you know, they need to add some points onto this man's stats. Either way, it's going to increase as the season goes on. It's just unfortunate that I don't think he got his due for what he did for that Houston Texans team, in my opinion. You guys let me know what you're thinking. Am I being a douchebag? Probably in most cases, but I'm giving you my honest opinion like I always do, and I'm ready for the backlash. Hit that subscribe button before you talk trash. Until next time, one love.